Howdy, everyone. So the cowling, of course, is back on the airplane, and it is now fully riveted with no Clecos. Well, that's not true. I still have Clecos up underneath on the bottom in six places because I don't have any nut plates on here quite yet. But the main riveting is all complete, and this is, of course, the, uh, the hinge method. So there are no quick uh, quarter turn fastener type deals. It's all hinges. So here's the thing, and I think I've talked about this before in other videos, but um, if I have, I'm going to say it again. So here's one of the things to remember when you're building the plane, okay? You want the plane to be as perfect as you can get it, I'm assuming. The only problem is, of course, Clecos are just Clecos, right? They only have so much holding power. It doesn't matter how many you use. It's only going to, each Cleco can only hold tight so much, right? So with everything Clecoed, I was able to get all my hinge pins in and out. I was able to reach through the oil cooler door on the other side, get those hinge pins in and out. No problem. Everything was working really great. Um, the gaps were, were kind of nice. I did have to work on those a little bit, which I did. I wanted to work on the gaps before riveting the hinges because it's just easier to file and sand and do whatever you need to do with the hinges off because they get in the way if you keep them clecoed. So I did all that. I thought I had everything cool. It looked great. I could take everything on and off. I could take just the top off and put it back on, no problem. I could pull the bottom off, put it back on, no problem. Take them both off, put them back on, no problem. So yesterday, um, I did the fuel tank sealant, I did the riveting, put it back together. And uh, the combination of trying to fix the gaps one last time and the riveting. So that combination combined... Things are not quite as nice as I'd like them to be. The rivets, of course, are permanent. Of course, the gripping power of the rivet is substantially greater than the Clecos, and things seem to shift around a little bit while you rivet. So, um, everything still goes back together really nice. Um, I had a little bit more difficulty getting these hinge pins in through the oil cooler access or the oil dipstick access. Still got them in no problem. It's not like I was struggling or I needed a hammer. They just didn't slip in as nice as what I, what I was used to with the Clecos. And the gaps have changed. So, like I said, it's fuel tank sealed and riveted now. So any changes that I try to make, I'm going to have to make them with the hinges in the way, which is exactly what I was trying to avoid. So this side, again, I don't know how this is going to show up, but this seam right here is probably the nicest seam on the cowling. It's very uniform and it's wide enough that I'm comfortable wrapping my vinyl on both halves and still have space in here. This gap here is okay. Um, it gets a little tight up in here. I may have to open that up a little bit. This gap has closed up a lot. This is tight through here now. I'm going to have to open this up. This has gotten a lot closer than it was. I'm probably going to have to open it up a little bit. The top gap is still good. That one was pretty large to begin with. Nothing has changed with these trouble areas, these problem areas with the, uh, with the step. This one's not so bad. This one here is absolutely horrible. This gap here is the one that pisses me off the most. This right here was tight. This gap right here. It was almost overlapping. So I made my usual reference marks, you know, that I needed to sand this back, you know, roughly from, from in here somewhere I made a mark. And from there back I needed to open that up a little bit, which I did. I probably did it too much. As you can see, there's quite a gap here now. But then it gets tight up here. I got to open this up some more. And I've got to basically from like this section here, probably a good, probably a good 10 inches is tight now. And the gap here is, 
is decent. So I've got a decent gap, almost no gap, and then too big of a gap. Irritates the crap out of me. And then this here, this actually looks really good now. This was actually a little bit too big. And now I may have to open it up a little bit. And then this gap through here is okay, this side gap. So it's not the end of the world, I know, but it's just something to keep in mind that when you go through the trouble of fitting your canopy, or fitting the cowling, fitting the canopy, fitting the gear leg fairings, whatever it is, just keep in mind, it may be perfect, but don't get your heart set on that because there's a good possibility that when you finally get it finished and it's riveted and it's bolted and it's on, it's going to move around a little bit. Again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't strive to be as perfect as you can because that's the goal. Um, but for me personally, I just find it very irritating because I get everything the way that I like it. And I'm like, man, if I can get this thing permanently attached and have it look this good I would be pleased but I threw this on yesterday looked at the gaps and was pretty annoyed so there's a uh, six and a half minute rant which I'm sure nobody wanted to hear but like I said just keep that in mind things will shift and uh, don't let it get to you like it does me <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take, I'm going to remark these a couple of places. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to work those areas to open up the gaps where they're too tight. Everything else, of course, I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to try to uh, finish up this uh, oil access door. All I need to do at this point is rivet it to the door itself. Of course, I got to countersink these holes. And then I got to countersink the uh, cowling and then attach the hinge. Um, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this hinge pin. I've got an idea for that. And uh, then I'm going to start installing the various nut plates. i got nut plates that need to go in these locations, and I've got nut plates that need to go underneath. So work on the cow one last time, I hope. Work on the door. Work on nut plates. Talk to you guys later. Howdy, everyone. So this is the top cowling removed, and you can see that the uh, hinges are in place with the fuel tank sealant as well as riveted. Slightly under riveted because you don't want to put a lot of stress into the fiberglass. Fuel tank sealant is very hard to clean off of fiberglass because the fiberglass is pretty rough. And of course, Pretty much trying to get the fuel tank sealant out from between the knuckles is almost impossible. But that's the best I could do with what I have. And those are now in and complete. So I am now working on the hinge for the oil cooler door. So here's the hinge finished. And you can see that it is also riveted in place. I chose not to do fuel tank sealant on these hinges just because um, they shouldn't really see a lot of stress. There shouldn't be a lot of um, tension on the hinges, on the hinge itself. I'm hoping that once the door is in place and riveted like you see here, and I've got it um, latched on the other side, that it really shouldn't see a whole lot of stress. So I didn't think it was necessary to do the fuel tank sealant. That will, uh, that's yet to be seen, of course, in the future if that's a requirement. But for now, I'm just gonna fly as is and we'll see what we end up with. So now, my next step is to figure out how I am gonna latch this door shut. And here's my plan. I've seen this done before, so it's not a new idea. But I am going to use more piano hinge. I'm going to attach piano hinge to the cowling somehow. And I'm going to attach it to the door somehow. Of course, I can't do that one-handed. Well, anyway... Attach half a hinge to the door, half a hinge to the cowling. 
and then use a hinge pin to attach the two. And that hinge pin is going to come all the way across, and I believe it hooks into, there are some fiberglass uh, pieces that will go in here. They're basically like almost like baffling, but they're to help the airflow that comes in to flow evenly across the cylinders. You don't want it to come in here and then be turbulent. And I believe those hinge pins run all the way and somehow hook into that. So when you want to open up the oil cooler door, you reach in the inlet and you pull the pin out so that the door releases. That's the plan. Um, I'm not entirely there yet. I've got a lot of work to do, but I'm just now starting to figure out how long to make the hinge. The hinge can't be too long because the hinge on the door, of course, has got to fit this opening so that it can open. And I need to figure out placement to where to put the hinge. And also the thickness of the cowling has to be considered. So with the door shut, you can't simply rivet the hinge onto the cowling and the hinge onto the door because you won't be able to get the pin in because the hinge halves will be offset. So I need to make a shim to bring the hinge on the door up flush with the cowling and then I can rivet together, all of that together. So that's kind of what I'm working on now is figuring out how thick of a shim I need and then I can shim the hinge half flush with the cowling hinge half. So those are the details I'm working on now. When I get something figured out, I'll, uh, I'll put it on video. Talk to you guys later.